glucose in urine is indicative of a pathological condition called diabetes. Conducting a Benedict's test will tell you the level of glucose in a urine sample. But did you know that the Benedict's test is an example of a chemical method called titration? Titration is a commonly used method to determine the unknown concentration of a solution. Although there are many different types of titrations, we will explore the most common method, acid-based titration, in this video. Acid-based titration is used to determine the concentration of an acid or base. In acid-based titration, a titrant of known concentration is poured into an equipment called a burette. A burette is a long glass tube with a tap at the end which can be used to carefully add drops of liquid to a test solution. If the unknown sample is an acid, then the titrant in the burette needs to be a base or vice versa since we are trying to see at what point the unknown sample is neutralized. Once the titrant is settled in the burette, it forms a curved surface of the liquid caused by surface tension. The bottom of this curve is known as the meniscus and that's what we use to take the measurements. Next, a known volume of the test solution called an analyte should be placed in a beaker under the burette. Most acids and bases are actually colorless, with no visible changes that can be shown during the process of titration. Now, to observe a color change during titration, a pH indicator is added in the analyte, the test solution. A pH indicator is an acid or base whose conjugate acid or conjugate base has a different color, different from that of the original compound. The color changes when the solution contains a one-to-one -one mixture of the different colored forms of the indicator. During titration, a pH indicator changes colors when the necessary amount of titrant has been added to analyte. This is called an endpoint, at which point we stop adding the titrant. In a titration, when the moles of titrant added are equal to the moles of the analyte, this is called an equivalence point. At the equivalence point, a neutralization reaction is completed and neither reactants are in excess. Please note that while an accurate indicator of the titration is one that changes color as close to the equivalence point as possible, it indicates when a particular pH value has been reached, not an equivalence point. We can also use a pH meter and a probe which gives a digital reading of the pH. Electrodes are typically used as probes to measure a potential difference between the analyte and a sample of a fixed pH. This is a quick and accurate way of measuring pH. Now we are ready to start titration. A titrant is added slowly to the analyte, the test solution, by turning the tap on the burette. Mix the beaker's contents regularly. As the color begins to change, turn the tap to drip slowly until the color of the pH indicator changes. At this point, you should turn the tap fully off. By reading where the meniscus now lies on the burette scale, we can work out how many milliliters we have added. Since we know the concentration and the volume of titrant added and the volume of analyte, we can then work out the concentration of the analyte. Remember to repeat the whole process at least three times to ensure an accurate result. During an acid-based titration, the pH can be plotted as a function of the volume of the titrant added. The titration of a strong acid with a strong base produces the following titration curve. The inflection point on the curve is called the equivalence point. Remember, an equivalence point is a point at which the moles of the titrant added are equal to the moles of the analyte. The titration curve has a steep slope around the equivalence point. Coming back to Benedict's test, Benedict's reagent contains blue copper 2 plus ions, which is reduced 
to red copper oxide. The copper oxide is insoluble in water and it forms a precipitate. The color of the final solution depends on the amount of glucose and also how many of the copper 2 plus ions are present. Benedict's reagent starts out aqua blue. As it is heated in the presence of glucose, it turns yellow to orange. The more red the final color of the reagent, the higher the concentration of glucose present in the urine sample. In general, blue to blue-green or yellow-green is negative. Yellow-green to bright yellow is a moderate positive. And bright orange to red is a very strong positive. Well, that's it for today. Thank you for watching.